All right, everyone. Thank you for joining. As everyone this is jumping on here, we're going to have a big audience. Kevin Michael Schmitz here, and I am a celebrity fashion photographer. I photograph major ad campaigns, whether it's for Burberry or Giorgio Armani. And I also have been publishing over 200 magazine editorials worldwide. Um, and I'm also a TV director, executive producer, and host of the TV show Great Escapes that airs on CBS. And I'm here to go in depth about photographic mastery. Um, now, this is something that um, you know, all photographers, everybody out there that photographs and takes image, you know, creates images, they all want to achieve mastery. Now, what is mastery? Essentially, it's creating content, it's creating photographs that can literally stand the test of time. Images that are impactful, images that are going to be powerful, images that are going to be iconic, and creating content that can be very, very marketable, whether it's for yourself, whether it's for branding campaigns, whether it's for companies, whether it's to sell magazines, whether it's the cover of a magazine, um, or whether you're a fine art photographer and creating photographic mastery uh, where it's a fine art image that is just can last the test of time. So today we're going to go in depth about photographic mastery and what that means and essentially how to achieve an incredible world-class photograph at the highest level. Now, of course, we do go in depth about all different aspects of photography, whether you want to master uh, landscape photography or fine art photography, or you want to master um, portraiture or weddings. Today, I'm going to focus mostly on photographing people and how to master a large scale production. So, you know, some of you guys have been on a, a shoot like that and some of you haven't, but we're going to be talking about a 20 to 30 person production team uh, photo shoot, something where we're working with world class top stylists, uh, world class top models that are flown in from New York, LA, Miami. And we're going to be uh, discussing this not only myself, but also we're going to bring in some panelists that just worked with me on set as well. We just got off an incredible production on the East Coast and um, we shot some world class fashion lifestyle um, and slice of life advertising photography. And it was an unbelievable story. So I'm really excited to share this content with you guys and really get you guys engaged in how you can create this content at the highest level. Um, so first and foremost, um, before my amazing panelist comes on, um, the great Shannon Bright, um, I do want to actually showcase some of the content that we've shot over the years that I feel is absolute photographic mastery. Um, now, of course, um, it's up to everybody's interpretation of what they think is, is amazing photography. But generally, you know, when we, we think of a world-class photographic mastery, we think of award-winning images. We think of content that, you know what, the image is so strong that you could blow it up on a giant canvas on a wall and it can stand by itself. Um, content that can get published, content that uh, demands attention. So we're going to be showcasing some of this content, some of the content that I'm really proud about. Um, this is, you know, we're going to start off by some of the fashion content. We're going to get into more of the lifestyle content as well. Um, and these images I'm showcasing to you are all images we created uh, with the photography workshop series over the last couple of years and also um, shot on location, whether in New York, LA, um, at the Virginia Equestrian Lifestyle Experience, Newport Beach, or we're shooting... Um, in Chicago, Las Vegas, et cetera, all these amazing locations. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about how we created these, what, what it takes to create photographic mastery. Now, this image right here, um, I believe this was done by an amazing photographer um, named Devin Mickens, a world-class photographer that um, came to us and we started working together. And I'm really proud of all the content that uh, Devin created. Um, but at this production, um, I, I wanted to kind of disclose to you guys how we made all this magic happen from shooting on a rooftop with an incredible, incredible skyline over New York, shooting with this unbelievable, crazy, huge dress and to make it look larger than life. I mean, it looks like she's, you know, nine feet tall, which is kind of cool. And then working with this top supermodel, uh, that, you know, is like a Vogue top model. So we, we want to talk about how we actually created this, um, and also, um, how you can do it, 
what what you can do to start creating content at this level. Um, okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to talk about my step by step process. And what I mean by that is, you know, when we're doing a shoot, it's not just like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to walk out there with my camera and just start photographing. It takes a lot of planning. And as you can tell, you know, with images like this one or images like this, where we shot this at our elite masterclass with parachutes and airplanes and unbelievable story that we publish in number eight magazine, or we're shooting out in the desert with a giant scaffolding or photographing with this unbelievable um, uh, if eagle, gold eagle wings and attire um, out in the desert in Las Vegas. Um, or we're shooting at a water studio with giant parachutes and um, wind blowing and creating this unbelievable story over water. Uh, but all of these images, they all have something in common, right? And by the way, all these images you're looking at, these are all art directed, um, produced and directed by me and photographed by our attendees at the photography workshop series, which is pretty awesome. And some of you guys uh, that are on right now have photographed these images, which I'm really proud about and really excited um, that I get to see a lot of familiar faces on uh, on this amazing webinar. So step one is going to be conceptualizing your photo shoot. OK, now what that means is coming up with the idea, coming up with the concept of the story that you want to tell. And now I don't care if it's fashion, if it's lifestyle, um, if it's um, even if it's you're, you're trying to tell like a documentary story, all of that entails creating a concept. Right now, for me, my methodology with doing this is um, I really love to create content that um is, you know, really, I would say timeless and classic. And I love that, right? Things that are timeless and classic. But I also want to create, um, I want to come up with ideas, ideas that I can pitch magazines, I can pitch to brands. And one of my one of the things I absolutely love to do is create uh, Pinterest boards. And, and I'm going to showcase my Pinterest page here. And I recommend you guys do this as well. So I have all kinds of amazing um, Pinterest boards here. Um, I've got quite a few of them listed here. And as you can see, those are all from different photo shoots, um, different inspiration, um, you know, whether it's for my 49 room, 13th century uh, French dream castle to um, uh, lifestyle stories, to swim stories uh, with Sports Illustrated, to fashion. Um, and also I'm collaborating on these concept boards with other photographers, ones that I work with and, and um, create something together. So for instance, um, we came up with this amazing desert fashion story. This was a Mike Wyatt story that um, he conceptualized and created some of these concepts that we were, you know, envisioning and shooting things like out in the desert and big flowing dresses and color and, um, you know, and going for things like this, which I absolutely love. Coming up with concepts where they all align with a similar cohesive feel. Another one was, um, th this is another one we did for our Elite Masterclass where we shot, we did conceptualized a Mad Max story. Uh, and Mike Wyatt had also um, put this together, conceptualized this whole Mad Max story for our Elite Masterclass. And it was awesome. It was such a cool story. And it all started out as this concept board, right? It all started out where we're coming up with ideas, whether it's the vehicles, whether it's the wardrobe, whether it's um, maybe poses, some of the, all the crazy cool stuff that you see here, right? And this is, these are, you know, images that are gonna be guiding not only me, but also guiding my wardrobe stylist, my hairstylist, my makeup artist, um, it's guiding our model casting, all of the things that it's coming together. I'm, I'm starting off, within some inspiration images. So I like to look at a few different places. I like to, um, I love Pinterest. Pinterest is one of my favorite, even if you're Google imaging things. I also like to look at some of the best photographers in the world, right? And I like to look up, um, there's some websites that I recommend you guys, uh, that you guys also go after, which is labook.com, uh, workbook.com. Um, those are all fantastic, um, uh, you know, essentially, really, really fantastic uh, source books where you can find some of the greatest photographers in the world and you can type in different campaigns and they can come up uh, or different magazine editorials and they can come up. So um, if you guys have any questions about that, um, you know, I, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to ask them. Um, one of my, um, I'm, I'm going to actually put some of the links on there, like labook.com, uh, workbook.com. Um, these are, 
uh, websites where they're, I put it in the chat, where they're essentially source books where you can find and look up photographers and look up some of the best of this best stuff happening right now. So I love that. I love that. Now, um, with these inspiration boards, of course, um, it, then, you know, we take it, we start off with the concept boarding, right? And, and I love this. I mean, what, what um, Mike came up with was, uh, was pretty fantastic. And we came up with all these ideas uh, that he had put together. Now I'm like, all right, this is great. We start off with a Pinterest board. Now, once we get a Pinterest board of say 30 images that we just love, I'm then going to have you guys think about, okay, well, let's pick out maybe the top six. And then, uh, you know, in here, like, you know what? I really like uh, this one with the girl. Um, this, this is amazing one. Um, you know, maybe this one where she's kind of kneeling down in the desert. Um, you know, uh, maybe some of the ones with the vehicles, uh, like, you know, some of these cool vehicles right here, um, you know, and kind of like thinking about some of this crazy cool stuff. Now, this is a pretty avant-garde thing, right? Um, but I'm then going to put together what we call creative brief. Now, some of you guys have done that they're on right now. And, and this is a creative brief that we put together and Mike came up with this. And then I essentially refined it a little bit. And this is an example of a brief. Now, this is my conceptualizing process, guys. Now, no matter what it is, if it's fashion, it's lifestyle, it's portraits, it's weddings, it's fine arts, documentary, whatever, I love doing this process. Now, this is a really avant-garde story. And um, I love this because I'm telling the story. There's like a one paragraph story of what Mike wanted to tell. Then there's um, uh, there's there's a series of um, uh, images that go along with it. And then who the talent is who the director of photography is the creative director the what the location looks like the wardrobe the props all of those details and i'm really interested because now when i'm approaching a magazine right and i'm uh, or even a client say it's a commercial client and i want to make sure that they understand the story that i'm trying to tell what better way to do it then showcasing it in an inspiration creative brief just like this. And I love this. This is such a cool way of doing it because once you have that creative brief story, it now illustrates exactly what the story, what the storyline is going to look like, right? And I love this because you can start off with the concept board. We can then move into um, the uh, the creative, the, essentially the creative brief. And then this also helps when we actually go on set and we're photographing something, it also helps guide how I want to pose the models, how I want the story to look, all of that, right? And I think that's really important and valuable. And I want to make sure that, um, you know, we're creating content uh, that's going to wow and dazzle a magazine and get that magazine to, you know, go ahead and and book us. I mean, that's that's the whole point. So if I send, say, three creative briefs over to a magazine and, um, you know, and they can say, hey, yeah, A, B, or C, which one are you most interested in, Right. Um, and then we can get down to the final story, okay, of what this all comes together, you know, how this all looks when it all comes together. And this is really exciting because you guys are looking at the creative brief and you're, and you're you know, you're seeing the story right now of what this, you know, our, our images and kind of what we wanted to shoot. And then we go into the actual production and this is what the shoot finally looks like. All started from inspiration, then went to creative briefs. Now we're putting it into action and photographing and filming. This is all shot by the attendees. This unbelievable Mad Max fashion story that I found really, really interesting and totally over the top. Now we do this no matter what you're doing, whether it's fashion, lifestyle, swim, whatever. I recommend you guys doing this. And this kind of shows the final putting it all together, right? And you can see the connections between what we initially conceptualized then how we refined it to then going into that final shoot. And I think that's really, really exciting. So um, anyway, th those that's just kind of a little step-by-step -step of how I come up with inspiration. And I love doing that because conceptualizing the part that the photo shoot, that's the most fun part. Now, I highly recommend you guys do that, not just go out and do photo shoots without a plan in mind, come up with some ideas, put it into action. And I've come up with so many cool creative ideas and so have our photographers over the year where it's tribal fashion, whether it's, you know, like, like we just did, did that last, uh, this, this, uh, past year, we did a tribal fashion story totally over the top where, you know, we had, you know, feathers and leather and animals and all this unbelievable stuff. And we created this epic content or, um, we put together these, uh, conceptualized stories at an airfield and creating these amazing stories where this started off, this airfield start, started off as a concept board. Then it went into creative brief. Then it went into a story and then got published. So it's a step-by-step -step process 
of how to create to photographic mastery right here, guys. This is how we're doing it, creating photographic mastery. So this is really exciting. It's really fun. And the best part about this, it's really fun to take part in, to be a part of it and have your creative vision come to life, which I love. And that's what the Photography Workshop Series is all about. Now, um, we also have some uh, really cool experiences that uh, um, when you're you're walking on set like this, for you to even have the experience of shooting at a scale of this magnitude with top supermodels from Bogue and shooting with 1940 spider planes and photographing this unbelievable story that wins major awards, by the way, it totally can transform your entire photographic career. And that's what I get really proud about. And that's what photographic mastery is all about. In, For instance, we've won about 185 photographic awards, including the One Island Awards, Lurzer's Archive, Communication Arts, Color Awards, all in the last two years, all by our incredible photographers that have attended our incredible workshop. So one of the cool things I do recommend is that the value of coming to this epic workshop experience with us is that not only will we guarantee you're going to photograph some of the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime, but also you're going to have an opportunity to command the set that is, and, and also conceptualize, create, design, and then photograph the greatest images you've ever shot in your life that you're a part of, that you're being in completely involved with, and you're directing these top models. And most importantly, when you're shooting something at this scale, the sheer cost of this production is astronomical. You know, these are, to do productions like this, it's anywhere from 80 to $100,000 a day. You know, between um, you know the the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, the permits, the locations, the um, uh, all aspects of the, the catering, from the location fees, from getting RVs, motorhomes, um, assistance, all you know, wardrobe stylists, the wardrobe buying fees, all the equipment, all the cost. You know, it's it's astronomical. Just like when I'm doing a big budget, massive scale advertising campaign, this is at that same scale, if not bigger which is pretty awesome. So that's one of the awesome things about the photography workshop series is the essentially the level and scale of what you guys get to experience is pretty next level, which I get really excited about, obviously. So I love it. I love you guys just giving the opportunity to just be, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just had access to shoot a production at this level, right? Now, um, I love this. I love this. And I get really excited about it, obviously. But I also, um, our photographers get really excited about this. And this is something that's really, really special. Um, and, you know, before I get into some of the next aspects come from my step-by-step -step process, I want to bring on um, an amazing panelist um, who, uh, her name is Shannon Bright. And um, Shannon, by the way, is a world-class photographer in her own right. Okay. Shannon, um, she is um, a photographer that... Uh, uh, she's actually been published in Elle magazine. She's uh, been published um, uh, in some major publications. I think Glamour magazine. She's a world class photographer already, and um, and Shannon is um, it actually came to our most recent photographic workshop just like two weeks ago, and um, and I'm actually going to showcase uh, some of her content uh, right now. And um, she's a world class photographer. I'm really proud of um some of the content that Shannon has created and um and and I and Shannon it's good to see you um and you're already a world class photographer so I'm really you know excited to have you uh come and attend the experience you've already created some photographic mastery um why don't you tell us a little bit about you know the experience that you had we just did our Virginia equestrian lifestyle workshop just 2 weeks ago um and you attended you had that amazing experience and then you did a one on one with me afterwards um and uh, tell me about your experience and you know do you feel like your photographic mastery has increased since that or during and since that experience hey kevin um yes i definitely do um i had never been to a production of that size and caliber in my life. And I've produced quite a few shoots on my own. Um, and so I do know a bit about, you know, what goes into um, producing a shoot, especially with um, having like a major magazine in mind for publication, um, you know, all the details that go into that. So I was so impressed, first of all, from start to finish with <laughs> really with everything from from getting there and meeting the other people, um, just the, the caliber of the models, um, the wardrobe, 
everything was absolutely amazing. Um, truly. So, um, and, and the images, oh my God, the images. Uh, yeah, I, I have so much respect for, um, what goes into a production of that size now. Um, personally, I had never photographed really more than two people. So, um, when you start bringing in, you know, multiple models and, animals and all the things that we were so blessed to be able to work with. Um, it's a whole nother level for sure. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, your work is stunning and you're a, a world-class photographer. We just looked at your work and your big publications in Elle magazine and stuff. But, um, the, the big difference though, is that they're single model scenes. And what I feel like if you want to get into the big commercial advertising industry, which it sounds like you do, and you want to shoot those hundred thousand dollar, you know, per day campaigns, one thing that's really important is to have multiple model scenes and that's hard to do. It's expensive to do. Um, it's hard to have access to, you know, to, to multiple models at that caliber. And then also, most importantly, is the art direction and the storytelling. Um, so we're looking at some of your images now, um, and I'm wowed and dazzled. I mean, these are these are unreal. They're they're wearing like, you know, $1,800 Zimmerman dresses. They're shooting at a multi-million dollar estate in Virginia. Um, but it's classy. It's there's great energy, there's great feeling, there's great emotion, it looks natural, it looks like I'm in that moment with those models having an experience. Tell me a little bit about that whole lifestyle experience that I know you're a little bit newer to. Um, why don't you tell me about how that felt and what was like art directing those scenes? Yeah, that was amazing. Um, just the the energy that has to be present when you're shooting lifestyle is so different from shooting fashion. Um, and so the art direction was so crucial. And um, I mean, you were amazing. You just got everybody set up in the right place and were just like counting them down and they were just coming. I mean, of course, the model selection was fabulous, but um, yeah, I, I really did not have an appreciation for just the, the difference in energy, the, the movement, um, you know, just really the whole vibe of the shoot is very, very different. So, um, and you're, and you're not only, um, art directing, you know, one person, but potentially, um, three to five people and you have multiple things going on like models in the background and, and you're your art directing them to dance and twirl and have fun and then you've got the model in the foreground and you're like you know play the guitar and do this or you know lead this llama around in the background so um, I mean it's absolutely amazing truly. Yeah, it really dynamic. And then what you mentioned, the animals, that kind of brings in a whole nother level of challenge <laughs> in production. <Yes. laughs> but uh, that was pretty awesome. You got to shoot with llamas. Um, I think we had like baby goats. We had um, horses. We shot with um, at a, an equestrian center. Um, unbelievable production. And uh, and of course, the, the animals don't always cooperate. So it's also pretty impressive that you're able to shoot these scenes with multiple models getting all of them in the right pose, but then also making sure that the horses or the llamas or you know the, the other animals are all being art directed properly too. Um, Shannon, tell me a little bit about um, maybe the, the the aspect of art direction because that's something that obviously there was a lot of that at this workshop. I would say that was one of kind of the specialties of this workshop. Um, you know, was there anything about the art direction side of it that you feel like you learned or you grew from or that you noticed at, at that experience? Uh, definitely. I mean, I had never art directed a scene or any scenes that were were like this before. So um, I think just knowing ideally how to um, or learning um, how to have multiple models, some interacting um, in one scene and keeping in mind where they are in the frame, um, their energy levels. Um, I think just really, uh, from start to finish, what goes into that? Um, I was, I was so impressed. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and you know, as far as uh, the, the process to create photographic mastery, um, you know, what do you feel like, you know, what was important to you in this process? Because, you know, you've done this kind of thing before, but was there anything different about this process that you feel like kind of helped you gain more photographic mastery um, throughout this process? Absolutely. I mean, just, just being able to um, see you on set um, and, and how you would prompt the models, um, get their energy right, 
Um, I mean, I think that's such a key part of it all in the art direction for lifestyle photography is it's really all about that energy and, and being in that moment. So if, if you don't create that as the photographer and art director, then your photos are going to be really flat. Um, you know, your clients aren't going to feel that energy. And that's really what you're selling in lifestyle is, is you're selling them that mood, right? Um, I mean, yeah, it's great that they have these Zimmerman dresses on and, and, but, but you're, you want to sell that moment um, that you can capture this moment in time. So I think for me, that art direction pot process was completely new. Um, I had never um, photographed models and, and put them into that um, type of energy level and interaction and things like that. I mean, everything I had done previously was much more posed. And, um, you know, if they were moving, it was minor and it was slower and and just all those components. So um, yeah, I mean, the art direction is really the thing I walked away from, I think learning the most because, um, you know, if you have beautiful people in front of your lens, most photographers can get a great shot of them. But I, I quickly learned that um, art directing is seen with multiple models and animals and um, props and, and all of that um, really requires a whole nother level. And um, I'm not there, <laughs> but I feel like I got a great introduction to it. And I certainly got to see you in action, um, which was great um, because I, I felt like a sponge. I was just kind of soaking everything in. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's um, it's definitely something that you cannot do on your own if you haven't been to a workshop like this. I mean, I just, I don't know how you could walk out and produce a shoot and get these kinds of emotions and energy and um, photographs if, if you hadn't been to something like this. So I never could have done it. I can speak for myself. I can't say that no one else could do it, but I certainly couldn't have done it. I mean, even from looking at ads and magazines, I, I would not have been able to go out and recreate that. So Totally, totally. Well, I mean, you're an, and you're an incredible, talented, incredibly talented photographer already, and you already know how to produce big shoots. But this, I think, took you to another level, another echelon in what you're capable of. And I think that what's great about that is that's something that you need to market. That's something that you need to showcase to these clients of yours and potential clients is that, hey, I am capable of doing something at this scale. You showcase content like this, which is what we call your photographic currency which is even more valuable in you know as a photographer than financial currency because now you're showcasing content like this to to major ad agencies to major modeling agencies to major photographic agents they're going to be a lot more interested in opening being opened up to working with you on a regular basis it kind of is the key to all of that so i'm i'm really excited for you shannon and i'm really proud of the stuff that um that you've created because this is this is really next level content um what's next for you what what are your goals photographically and um you know with with what you're going to do in your photography going forward well i mean like you said i was lucky enough to be able to do a one on one with you um following the virginia workshop so that was incredibly helpful um we really kind of made a to do list for for me and my businesses in trying to um you know, create a separate lifestyle brand, first and foremost, um, get get my website squared away and, and up and running. And then, um, you know, really just focusing on that amazing content. Um, you know, I got a good start, but, um, you know, I, I don't have that 40 image cohesive body of work that, you know, um, we talk about all the time. So really just um, being able to, to get that amazing content in, um, you know, that's really where I'm focusing right now. Um, I'm going to France with you in September, which I'm super excited about. So I'll be able to work on the fashion side of my book. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, um, really, I don't know of another place that you can go and get the caliber of images that I walked away with from Virginia. So, um, so I'm excited about France, but, um, you know, I think it's, um, just really for me that content building. And then when I feel like I'm in the right spot to start reaching out to clients. So. 
Yeah. Well, and what Shannon's mentioning is that she's attending our French Dream Castle experience. And as many of you guys know, I own a 49 room 13th century palace in France. And we are holding a world class high end fashion production there uh, this September. Uh, Shannon's going to be attending, and it is going to be a world class production. It's something where we're going to be bringing elite costuming, um, high end fashion brands, and fashion designers. We're going to be bringing models, top models in from Milan and Paris. And it's a six day experience. Um, and um, Shannon, I believe you're bringing your son, right? Yeah. <laughs> this experience. So a lot of the photographers are bringing a guest. Um, so that's an option as well, uh, which I do highly recommend. Um, and it's an absolutely incredible experience. So um, this gives you some of the, you know, the, the concepting and also the castle of what we're going to be doing, which is really, really special. So um, I'm, I'm excited about that. Now, um, uh, if you guys are interested in, in any of these experiences, including the French Dream Castle, definitely let us know. Um, and I also um, wanted to, to talk a little bit about um, Shannon. Um, we talked about your photography, um, but what I'm also interested in is what do you want to do next in video? Because, you know, at the workshop, you also were able to direct and camera operate and operate drones with uh, filming video. And actually, here's some content of you uh, photographing. Um, <laughs> this is some some aerial drone stuff shot at this multi-million dollar estate. Um, and you are uh, directing these scenes with incredible models um, here for this lifestyle story um, and photographing this amazing you know sequence here, but also filming it um, with aerial drones as well as with... Um, uh, with the uh, the gimbals and shooting with 8K cameras with 120 frames a second in 4K. So that's pretty cool. So tell me a little bit about the experience of filming video. Um, you know, did you learn much with that? Is that something you want to do more of or offer more to your clients? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, video has been on my list of things for a long time. I think it's just, it's, um, it's hard to, um, it's hard to master um, without uh, having somebody right there to, to really, to teach you. Um, I find that it's for me, um, my brain has a hard time switching from photo to video, um, and back and forth. Um, so it was really great to, to get to work the gimbal, um, to learn, you know, some of the techniques of getting the, um, the right video, um, the, the gimbal movements. I mean, that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Um, I mean, the drone was amazing. So, I am really looking forward to incorporating more video into my work personally, and also to start to have that on my website and be able to share that with clients. Because I know video is where everything is going. I mean, the photography will, of course, always be important. But um, I think one of the first things a prospective client looks at now is, is whether you have any kind of motion um, or can offer that to them. So um, I know it's important um, and I really enjoy it. I think it would be um, a lot of fun to, to um, continue working in that and, and becoming more proficient. So, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because you know what, Shannon, if you want to shoot those really big productions, oftentimes the um, clients, the, the ad agencies that will hire you or the brands that will hire you will hire you to both do photography and video these days because our cameras can do both. And a lot of times they want it to seamlessly work together. And, you know, if you're shooting the R5 uh, or the R5C and you've got a, you know, a, a 45 megapixel camera that films in 8K, that's something that you can offer. <laughs> you know, it's something. And the great thing about it, Shannon, is it can massively increase the budget of your shoots. So oftentimes the budgets of video production shoots can are typically like at least three times of a commercial photographic production. You know, so if a photographic production might be $50,000 for the shoot, the video production of it might be 150,000. So it obviously depends on what you're shooting, but uh, that just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. And it's something that, you know, you now can offer because the content you shot, um, I'm sending you, uh, you, you, you gave me a hard drive. I'm sending you all the video content that you shot throughout the workshop. Then you can now use that for your master reel. And I do recommend you put this on the front page of your lifestyle portfolio um, website so that when somebody comes to their website, they're just like, oh my gosh, like, wow, because that video is more impactful than just still photography. You know, I mean, I'm a photographer and I love photography at heart, but I have to admit video is more powerful. Yeah, I 100% yeah. agree. 
Yeah. And especially look how gorgeous this is. I mean, this, and this is shot with a drone. This is shot with a drone in 4k at 120 frames a second and it's razor sharp and it's beautiful. Um, and it's something that, um, I'm, I'm really excited for you to use this and to market this to your, to your audience. Um, and also even content like this, where it's content of you shooting is also really valuable so they can see the scale of the production. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Production. Yeah. Awesome, Shannon. Um, and what would be your ideal clients going forward? Like for, you know, for 2023 and 2024, what would be, why don't you tell us a little bit about your dream clients? I know that we did our one-on-one, -on -one, we talked about Zimmerman, which by the way, we are featuring a bunch of Zimmerman dresses. Are there, are there any other specific brands that would be like, you know, the end all be all for you? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I definitely still, um, I'm very attracted to the more like uh, fashion lifestyle brands, I guess I would call them. So the Zimmermans, Free People, um, Anthropology, um, who else is on my dream brand list? Um, I mean, Ralph Lauren, um, you know, the ones that really have that um, beautiful catalog of, of images that are shot, you know, on location somewhere. I mean, that would be my dream. Um, you know, spell the gypsy. I mean, the, all of those type, um, brands. So those are really my ideal clients, um, right now. And, um, but even shooting for, I think, um, a resort, um, to be able to do, you know, uh, to incorporate some, um, location stuff for a beach resort or, um, a sunglass company. I mean, I would, I would be all in for any of those, honestly. So, Excellent. Excellent. That's, that's great. Um, so going forward, you and I put together some really cool, um, uh, conceptualizing, de developing your master portfolios. And what we talked about is your 40 image cohesive body of work. Where did we get to as far as how many final images do you have as far as individual scenes? And, and this is important. So we also talked about this, like individual scenes, meaning each page of your portfolio is a different wardrobe change and um, different sequence. So um, how many individual final master scenes do you have now at this point? I think from this workshop alone, I have 15. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Fif uh, 15 that you and I picked out for my portfolio specifically. So none of them are repetitive. That's fantastic. And as we, and, you know, we, when we bring in photographic agents that, that speak about, um, you know, basically how to master it in the industry, having that final master portfolio with 40 cohesive images, but also having at least 20 to 30 that are iconic. And to be honest, I mean, I, I can't remember the exact amount of iconic images, but I think there's at least like 10 iconic images in there. And from one, you know, just a few days of shooting, that's incredible to have that many iconic images. And that's what I'm, I'm really, really proud of you about is having that many iconic images at that level. Um, so, um, so next steps for you is going to be marketing, right? Um, right. And it's marketing these images and then continuing to build this master portfolio. You've got France that you're going to add to it and create more of the fashion brand. And then you've mm -hmm. got now this commercial lifestyle content um, that's really, really world-class. And, and we even shot a few fashion stories at yes. this one too, which was, yeah. which was pretty yeah. fantastic that line up with Zimmerman. Um, so we can really showcase that to those brands directly. And, and that's something that I know, um, Shannon, if you have the opportunity to showcase content with their brand to that client, it's going to be more likely for them to land your, you to land that job because it's specific to that brand. Um, so anyway, so thank you so much for jumping, you know, jumping on and showcasing all this incredible work because, you know, your work is absolutely stunning and I'm really proud of how far you've come and you're already an L published photographer and now you got it. You've even gone to a whole new level. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. You know, after France, after the masterclass, it's going to be seeing you at a you know an even higher level of of success. So thank you so much for coming on, and I really appreciate you being a part of all of this. Thanks for having me on. Excellent, excellent. Um, all right, guys. So uh, that was awesome to have Shannon on. She uses it. She's a brilliant photographer um, and very, very talented in what she's doing already. Um, I'm really, really impressed at how far she's come and she's already successful along the way. But we do open up these experiences to all different levels of photographers, you know, whether you are very experienced or whether you are um, new. Um, we, uh, you know, we can help, you know, you guys on every step of the way. Now, if you guys haven't done it already in the chat, there's, um, 
I put in there a, uh, a link to set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with one of my elite photographic consultants. And I know many of you guys, especially if you've attended workshops before, or you've attended a bunch of these webinars, um, that you've, you've had this experience, but you know what? Still, I, I recommend you guys jump on, schedule one of these. What's great about this, it's totally free and it's a one-on-one -on -one mastermind session. So instead of just jumping on and listening to these webinars, it's something where it's one-on-one -on -one to you, personalized. One of my team can actually help you. It's totally free, give you guidance, mentorship, and coaching along the way. And the reason that I've been offering that for the last 14 years is guidance and mentorship absolutely free is because I'm a strong believer that we need to work together in the photographic industry. And we need to create world-class content and we need to take it up to the next level and not just compete with with other photographers and worry about competing on price and you know and cost but competing on value competing on world class quality of your work competing on being the best photographer out there and not really worrying about the competition of others and trying to just you know throw something at the wall and hope that it sticks our photographic consultants can help you, can guide you, can work with you personally, whether you're going over and you want to do an image review with them where they sit down one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom and go through your images together, or whether um, you want to come up with a business strategy plan, uh, which is what we did um, we, at an even higher level with Shannon, where after her photographic workshop experience, we did a one-on-one -on -one where it was her and I in person going in depth about the business of her photography, which was also really, really fantastic um, right after that workshop. And we came up with a strategy plan that's going to help take her to that next level, which I'm really, uh, really excited about. And it, it will give you that guidance, that coaching, that mentorship. And these, these mastermind sessions, they're totally free. So why not take advantage of them? And, and also, if you guys are interested in taking these experiences, definitely um, let us know. We would love to have you a part of it and help grow and develop your photography. Whether you're doing it full time, whether you're doing it on the side, whether you're doing it as a passion or whether you're doing it as a career, we're here to help you guys because we want to see you succeed. Okay, so, um, and also, if you guys, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them in the Q&A. Um, I do love hearing questions um, and uh, answering you guys. Uh, that's absolutely um, a, a, part, a whole part of this. Um, now, I want to get to the next secret of photographic mastery um, with my process. So we talked about conceptualizing the shoe. Um, the next thing is producing a shoe and how to make it all happen. Okay. Now I know we talk a little bit about how grand that is and how big that is. And we're showing, you know, behind the scenes video and, and aerial shots and stuff like that. But to make that all happen, this is very challenging. Okay. <laughs> Producing a shoot at this scale, um, it takes weeks and weeks and weeks of preparation. It takes me a ton of time, a ton of man hours. And I've been doing this for, you know, for my entire career for 20 years as a photographer. So for me, I, I already have the relationships and connections, but if you don't already have the relationships and connections, it's going to be a lot more challenging. But I, I am going to, you know, reveal to you some of my tips and strategies of how to make that happen. Okay. So first of all, you know, one of the cool ways of, of finding amazing locations, incredible spots, uh, just like, uh, you know, we're seeing here, and I'll, I'll play back this video like, like this one. Um, one of the strategies I do is, you know, if you want to go to a fabulous estate and have not have to hassle with film, film permits, but have a really great location like this, where you are um, you know, you've got bathroom facilities, you've got, you got to think about, hey, if it rains, what happens? Um, you know, we have an overhang here. Um, this one also happens to have a jacuzzi, a pool, has an ice maker, a barbecue, has all kinds of cool amenities. And it's a massive, massive house on a massive amount of acreage. So we have a lot of space. Um, but I'm thinking about this now, the way to achieve this, one of the techniques I do is I go after, I go on like Sotheby's or some of the most premier um, real estate uh, uh, agents. And I start, you know, whether I'm looking up on Zillow or I'm, you know, I'm uh, researching through the most high profile real estate agents in the country. And what I do is I start emailing them and I start calling them and I'll start text messaging them and I'll have a huge database and I'll do this for literally almost every production. I'll have a database of these, you know, I might contact say 50 different um, listings, different, and, I, and, and you want to speak to the listing agent that's, that's representing it. And I'm going to pitch them. I'm going to be like, hey, you've got this amazing location and, you know, I, I'd like to pay you and I'd like to film and photograph some world-class content at your location. 
um, and that you can use for your marketing. So I, you know, I have a whole email, a presentation that I send. I also include, of course, I happen to be a TV host and director of the travel show, Great Escape. So that helps build my profile um, so that when they look at it, they're like, oh, wow, it's a travel show. And you go to five-star resorts like Ritz Carlton. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you're going to be, um, I would love to have you come and shoot here. Right now, of course, it's also a production. So you've got models and stylists and 20, 30 people on set. Um, so you have to make sure they're okay with that. Um, but essentially I offer them a payment plus I shoot content. Now, this is going to be, this is going to save you a lot of money because if you try to go through a location scout or you try to book this, um, you know, try to find locations that normally do shoots and productions, you're going to look at anywhere from, you know, at the very, very low end, you're going to look at like 6,000 a day all the way up to like 30,000 a day. Depends on the location if you're going for premier locations. Okay. So, um, but for a location like this, it's typically 10 to 20,000 a day per day. Right. So that gets really expensive. Obviously, most photographers aren't going to foot the bill for that. So this is a solution that helps me produce these epic shoots in mass scale, um, but not have to spend $30,000 a day doing it. Right. So uh, with just the location fees. So uh, this is a great solution. Now, that's not easy. Now, a lot of these real estate agents don't want to talk to you. So you have to you have to you know be ready to have a lot of rejection, be ready to deal with a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of rude people and stuff like that, too. It depends on the location. Um, but, uh, you know, when I'm contacting ones in New York, um, it's I deal with a lot of difficult people. But um, but this is a great way of doing it. And it's and it's one of the ways in which I have found these unbelievable properties, incredible properties. Um, you know, I, and I'm really, really excited about the kind of, you know, uh, places that we've had. I mean, multi-million dollar places. We even, um, our uh, production manager, um, uh, Priscilla Evans, uh, worked with, with me on this and, and, um, we were able to uh, secure this $40 million mansion, um, in Greenwich, Connecticut at our New York fashion experience. And that was absolutely mind blowing. It was, um, you know, seeking out these ultra luxury properties and then getting them and convincing them to allow us to shoot there. And a place like this, it's something where, um, not only is it would be incredibly, you know, outrageously expensive to to um to book but this this location they don't even use it for shoots they only open it up once per year uh for a garden club and no one else and we're the only other people they allowed but we talked them into it so this is one of the things getting these premier locations that's something that obviously i have a lot of experience with and i can you know um i i've you know, done this for a long time and I've been able to achieve that and now, or of course, um, I've been also very fortunate, uh, that, uh, I've been, um, successful as a TV director and photographer, and I've been able to buy my own locations as well. So obviously shooting at the French castle. Um, and when you have your own location, you know, we literally can do anything we want there because it's a 49 cast room castle on, on 12 acres of property, and we can shoot anything we want with no restrictions. Of course, that's the most ideal, but obviously at all these other locations around the country, uh, in a America, we um, we're we're essentially building relationships and then uh, you know allowing us to to shoot there. So that's some strategies and tips. The next thing is, guys, one of the things I want you guys to always remember with producing is making sure that all the details are there for your shoot. Meaning um, that you know, first of all, before I even book that location, I am going to book my wardrobe stylist. Okay, wardrobe stylist is more important than anything. And a lot of photographers think, oh, no, it's about the photography or, oh, no, it's about my lighting or my cameras or or even the location. Trust me, none of that matters if you don't have world class fashion styling. It doesn't even matter. It's not even relevant if you don't have a world class stylist. And if you don't have a stylist or your styling falls through, you don't have a photo shoot. OK, so you've got to have world class styling. And creating photographic mastery, this is a big part of it, is building relationships with stylists, like stylists that style for Vogue, like the stylists we used on this one at this $40 million mansion, and building connections with them. Now, um, there's a few ways to do that. Um, uh, you know, I recommend going through stylists at agencies. That way they are responsible to the agency and you're going to have probably less problems with them. Um, but that being said, and I mean, I've worked with literally hundreds of fashion stylists in my career. I don't even know how many, um, you know, probably three to 400 fashion stylists in my entire career. And I have only liked maybe four in my entire career. So they're hard to deal with. They are challenging people. And oftentimes um, they, it gets very expensive. So you've got to work with as many as you can until you find the right ones that you want to book all the time. And luckily at that Virginia experience that um, 
Shannon attended. I worked with this amazing stylist, Kathy, that I've worked with now for many years, and I've booked her on multiple productions. And because she always uh, follows through and is incredible, um, I trust her, and I know that the wardrobe is going to be on point. And that's very, very important to have that styling uh, you know, world class, because if you don't have your stylist, you don't have a photo shoot. And, um, and guys, that is something producing, making sure your stylist, um, also is pulling new wardrobe. A lot of times stylists aren't going to, you know, they're going to go cheap unless you have this massive budget and they're going to pull stuff from their own closet. They're going to pull stuff that's not in season. They're going to pull, and when I say pull, I mean like collect it, you know, wardrobe, that's not really what you want. You want the best of the best stuff. And if they don't have that, um, then your photo shoot is going to fall apart. That's why, you know, having styling like you see here is really important. Having world-class stuff that literally this was pulled for a Vogue shoot that was happening the following week. And we actually got to use it at our workshop, which is really cool. So, you know, wardrobe styling is key. On top of that though, because I don't trust that the stylist will follow through <laughs> because I've been doing this a long time. And on top of that, I also personally on my own credit card order uh, between thirty and forty thousand dollars worth of wardrobe on top of that for every single photo shoot that I do, every single shoot, without fail. Even if it's like a one day or two day shoot, I still will order uh, you know at, at least thirty thousand dollars worth of wardrobe. And how I do that is I have high balance credit cards. I highly recommend each and every one of you get a 0% interest credit card. Every single person that's a photographer should have a very high limit on their credit cards. Um, you know, if you can have like a $50,000 limit, that's ideal. Um, I would say a minimum of a $20,000 limit. But if you don't do that or you don't use credit cards for some reason, you need to start because you can't be successful as a photographer especially shooting high-end fashion and commercial advertising without a high limit credit card. It just won't work because I'll tell you why. If you are producing a shoot and say you need to buy $30,000 of $30,000 worth of wardrobe, I don't want to take that out of my checking account. That's ridiculous. I want to put that on a credit card. And there's huge benefits to that, right? It's a lot safer. It's a lot easier. And also it's going to be easier with the returns always, always put it on a credit card. So if you guys don't already have a 0% credit card or at least a credit card with a high limit, highly recommend you guys get one immediately. Um, and uh, that I personally love the Bank of America um, business, small business credit cards. They're fantastic. Also the American Express ones. Um, I have like a $52,000 limit on my American Express uh, platinum business card. Fantastic. And that way um, I can buy that those clothes, have them delivered to that location, use them for the shoot, pack them back up, ship them back. Okay. So that's kind of, you know, how we do it, but it's, it, it takes a lot of time and energy. And obviously there's, there's, um, risk because I'm buying all the clothes. I hope they don't get damaged. Right. Um, so there's a lot of risk on my back, but it's still worth it because as you guys can tell the scale and the quality of these productions is pretty freaking next level. It's world-class. And because of that, the images are iconic because of that, the images get published on every shoot because of that, the images are winning awards. Um, next thing is with, with producing guys also make sure that you have great catering. Okay. I know this sounds silly, but if you don't have amazing catering, then you uh, are going to, you know, probably frustrate your models and staff. So that's something that I do recommend investing in. Um, you know, catering can be very expensive, uh, but I would recommend contacting several catering companies, getting quotes, uh, getting for, you know, exactly what you need for the shoot and for enough people. You know, I'm usually catering for like 25 to 30 people on set. Um, and, um, and it gets expensive, but when I, you know, when everybody can, you know, break for lunch and have this beautiful, delicious spread with, you know, you know, salmon and skewers and, you know, um, uh, having brisket and then they have salads and they have vegan options. And they have all these different things, all their fingertips, very important because everyone's happy. And when those models are happy, the stylists are happy. I tell you what, <laughs> you're going to have a much better shoot. You're going to have a much better experience and everything is going to be a lot more professional. So catering is key. Um, I, uh, and also I recommend, you know, you have the big, the things with sternos, uh, have extra sternos, relight them after the first hour or two, because they're probably going to go out and you want to have that food continuously there available because sometimes you're in the middle of a shoot and I'm photographing this model. Um, and she hasn't eaten yet. 
And then when we finally break and then we photograph the next model, well, that other model needs to go back and have, you know, have, have food and relax and stuff before she gets styled in the next outfit. So all these things are really important. And I know they might sound more trivial to you, but they're absolutely vital to making the production world-class. Um, also little things. I also make sure that I don't even drink coffee, but um, believe it or not, I have a lot of energy, but I always, you know, I rack up like $200 a day in coffee uh, spend on my photo shoots because I get everybody at the shoot coffee. And sometimes we do multiple runs on the same day. Um, that's a big deal. People like their Starbucks, right? I'm making sure the models have it in the morning, the stylist, if there's, if it's at a workshop, the other photographers, everybody on set needs to feel happy and feel good and feel taken care of all very important. Um, uh, so these are all little things, but they add up to be really, really important things when you're producing a shoot and making all this magic happen. Of course, the equipment is vitally important. Um, I often, uh, you know, what I do is when I travel around the world, um, I bring to, I bring with me certain gear and then the rest of the gear, I rent it at the location. So for instance, um, there's a lot of, uh, rental houses that rent photography equipment that don't rent eight by eight foot scrims. Okay. Eight by eight foot scrim gyms. These are the giant scrims and you've seen them in some of the videos, um, that, uh, that I had on here. Um, these are, uh, the scrims that go overhead, um, and they essentially, um, diffuse the light or we use them as bounces. Um, this is actually a little video from what we just shot in Miami uh, last month. This shows you an idea of what that scrim looks like. It's a one and one quarter stop scrim on an eight by eight foot scrim gym city. Um, so I bring this equipment everywhere I go, believe it or not. I bring the frames and the silks uh, with me, that eight by eight footer. I bring like uh, three eight by eight footers and a six by six footer everywhere I go worldwide no matter where I go, whether it's filming in the Maldives, whether I'm uh, shooting in France at my castle, whether I'm shooting in New York or Miami or LA or Virginia, I bring this everywhere. I have it all in a snowboard bag, like a Burton snowboard bag, uh, packed up and it's all exactly 50 pounds with um, all my frames, my silks, uh, my bounces, and then also the clamps to go with it. And it, I just goes with me as a check bag everywhere I go. Um, and the reason I do that is because they're vitally important, but they also are not um, very easy to rent in a lot of places. Most rental houses do not carry this specific item, or they might only have one. And I want to have three. You know, I want to have enough production equipment uh, at all times, and I want to have the right stuff. So this is something I bring. I also bring, of course, my cameras. Um, and now, of course, for these workshops, I might have, I usually bring at least five cameras with me, but if it was just be by myself, I would probably bring um, probably three. Um, I, and the reason being is I like to have backups. And also if I'm filming, um, if you're filming with a Canon R5, they can overheat. So I recommend having a backup R5. Um, or shoot it with an R5C, which doesn't overheat. Um, so for instance, I have two R5s, two R5Cs, and then two 5D Mark IVs, and I bring those with me, and I have lenses for all of them. Um, so I have my camera gear, and I recommend my lenses be in the 16 to 35 or 17 to 40. So wide angle lens, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and then um, my 70 to 200. And those would be my recommended lenses. Um, and uh, that would be um, strongly suggested uh, for, for you guys for all of your photo shoots. If you have those three lenses, you should essentially have everything you need as far as focal length. Um, so uh, with equipment, um, all of the other things like such as the C stands, the sandbags, I usually rent about 25 sandbags. Um, I'll rent usually like about eight to 10 C stands and combo stands, uh, which are the, the giant stands actually that you see um, that you see here. These are two combo stands um, with arms and clamps. Um, and I usually rent that at the location that I'm at, um, whether it's Miami or New York or wherever. Um, and in a place like Miami, you also notice I, I'm, I have a cart. So I'm, I'm uh, bringing the stuff on the sand, my assistants are, um, and having a cart to haul it. Uh, one thing I also recommend is many of you guys don't shoot with assistants got to have assistants guys. I, I always bring on um, at least three to four photo assistants with me on every photo shoot. Um, and, and I think it's really, really, really important, especially handling all that big heavy gear. Um, one is a safety issue. So nobody gets hurt. Th that stuff doesn't blow over or something falls or whatever. And two, just because it's a lot of work and you need extra people on set, you know? So, um, and I recommend having some strong photo assistants that can help you. Um, and if you don't have them have like your, you know, your kids or your, husband or your friends or whatever, come and help you. Um, and, you know, if you can't afford an assistant or whatever, but I do recommend hiring photo assistants. Um, they, uh, it, it will make your life a lot easier, <laughs> trust me. Um, and, and you can never have enough. So I always try to hire as many as I can. So that is really, really important. 
Um, so, uh, um, okay, so um, I also wanted to answer a few of your guys' questions. Um, so Catherine asks, um, how, are you, how are you taking off tags, wearing and returning? Uh, you used to be able to do that, but not so much today. So Catherine, glad you asked um, this award of question. When I am uh, uh, buying and returning, um, I have there's a method to this. Uh, first of all, you don't want to buy it in stores. Okay, that's the biggest mistake. You never ever ever want to buy clothes in stores. Uh, the reason is is because um, the um, the managers of the stores get really upset and they try to not let you return things. Um, and you're going to run into a lot more problems if you're trying to do it at a store because it'll show up as a loss while that manager's on duty. It'll show up as like a you know a buy and then a, and then the net and then maybe you return it and the next manager's on and it looks like oh they just lost a bunch of money that day you know so they don't like to do it and they're going to give you a hard time. Okay, so just as a suggestion, I, I recommend uh, not buying in stores. Uh, it used to be that's what people would do, but there's just so many problems now with it. Um, that I that I definitely don't recommend um, buying in stores. It's just going to create uh, a lot more <laughs> issues. Uh, so buy things online. Um, that's what I recommend. You know, um, whether it's Nordstrom, whether it's um, uh, Neiman Marcus, whether it's uh, Macy's, they generally have really good return policies. Um, always keep the tags on. I mean, all these shoot, all these outfits all had their own, all the had, had all the tags on. Um, and what a good wardrobe stylist does is they style it, but then they make sure that the tags are hidden. The tags are tucked. You know, if these girls turned around, you'd see all kinds of tags and clamps and stuff all behind them. So they're they're always tucked and they're they're out of place. Now there are some garments where maybe the tag you absolutely have to remove it to shoot with. Um, and I would be very careful of doing that. But if you have a good stylist, you can always remove the tag and take a tag gun and re tag it afterwards. So that's what I would do. Um, but I rarely do that. We always, almost always shoot with the tags on, uh, that way you have less worry and they will always return it. Um, because they have no way of, you know, saying, no, it's, you know, it's a new, it's a new, um, garment. It has a tag on it. They have to return it. Um, and when you mail them back in, it just goes to a warehouse anyway. All they do is just scan it and they don't even really, you know, check if it's been worn or not. So, I mean, I never have issues when I'm buying and returning from these certain department stores or Amazon or, um, uh, you know, free people is a lot harder. They're a lot, lot, lot harder to deal with, but, um, but I love their clothes. So I, I deal with them a lot as well. Um, but uh, but the wardrobe on this is absolutely beautiful. And we're using, you know, and, and it, um, Shannon was talking about how she wants to shoot for Love Shack uh, Fancy or Spell the Gypsy or Zimmerman. And we incorporated all of those brands into the shoot, as well as Camilla, which, you know, has these, you know, $1,500 dresses as well. So incredible wardrobe. And it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, this wardrobe is next level. So, um, yeah, but great questions. And it looks like, um, you know, Kenneth uh, asks, uh, what about a DIT for the crew? So um, a DIT, if you're, if so Kenneth is probably referring to somebody that um, is handling like um, uh, the tech, handling the, um, you know, whether the data transfers, handling the memory cards, handling um, the digital aspect. Um, so uh, that, that definitely you can bring those on. I personally don't. Um, I just don't feel like it's really necessary. I mean, unless you have a huge campaign and you've got a budget for that, I might. But otherwise, uh, for most shoots, I do it myself. I just, I don't know. I have a thing about it. I don't, I, I want to make sure that I've never lost an image in 20 years. I've never had an, you know, hard drive go bad where I didn't have it backed up or I didn't have a memory card that got lost. I've, I've never lost an image and it's because I take care of it myself. And I just have a thing about that. I feel like I don't want to put that in someone else's hands. I'd rather take care of the images myself. And also I'm shooting with large enough memory cards, Kenneth, 512 gigabyte memory cards that I rarely ever need to, 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 um, change the cards. Um, I would say the only time would be if I'm filming with the 8K camera, we're shooting, you know, or, or 120 frames a second at 4K, that might burn through a card. But other than that, photographing, I should never have to change a card in a day. You're, you know, you should be able to um, photograph throughout the day. And at the end of the day, just, you know, upload your or download your, your content to a hard drive. Um, I do recommend though, Kenneth, um, always backing that up to a backup hard drive. And then if you have it, maybe back that one up to another hard drive. I have everything in duplicate or triplicate. I have probably 56 hard drives sitting here in my office. Um, and I also highly recommend, um, I really like the Western digital ones that have the, um, a, uh, I mean, of course, if you, if you have digital, um, if you have solid state, that's gonna be the best, but they're very expensive. So if otherwise like the 14, um, uh, terabyte, uh, Western digital hard drives that have an external, power source tend to be very durable. I mean, I have 
you know, of those alone, I probably have like 46 of those. Um, and, uh, and they never seem to fail. They're fantastic. Um, but that would be my recommendation. And of course I have a lot of content because I've been doing this for a long time and shooting a lot of cool stuff. So, um, all right. And as far as, uh, these are great questions though. And I'd love to, um, uh, you know, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask them. Um, the next thing I wanted to, to get to was, um, we talked about uh, conceptualizing shoot. We talked about producing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about casting. Okay. Now, casting models is hard to do <laughs> for a number of reasons. First of all, because we don't always have access to the top models in the world, right? I mean, if you don't live in LA or New York or Miami, you're not really going to be in a market where you've got the best models in the world, right? And if you don't have the best models, uh, you know, I kind of think what's the point? You know, especially if you're building a portfolio for fashion or commercial, you know, lifestyle, um, or you're doing anything commercially, you've got to have top talent. So if you're living in a market that's not, you know, essentially LA, New York, or sometimes Miami because it's seasonal, but um, I would say LA or New York, you've got to be able to cast models from those those big major areas, and I recommend flying them in personally. That's what I do. So, you know, we shot this in Virginia, um, you know, world-class locations, unbelievable places shooting with, you know, equestrian polo fields and all this stuff, but the models aren't up to par. And in fact, I didn't hire a single model or um, in this area. So not a single model. I flew everybody in. I had five models that I flew in from LA, New York, Miami, and I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I'm bringing in top talent. So when I'm casting, I'm looking for models, if it's for lifestyle, for instance, I'm looking for models that have expressions, that are fun, that have energy. And like, like these models, for instance, Hannah, and uh, we also had this amazing model, Ronnie, who's also a big influencer. Um, they have great energy. They great, have great emotion. So a little secret with casting is, first of all, you have to have a world-class portfolio. If you don't have that world-class portfolio, then you're never going to be able to cast top models. It just isn't going to work. The, the top modeling agencies aren't going to work with you. But if you can showcase, you know, content like this that you're looking at now or content like this where you have world-class uh, top fashion models and big production shoots, if you have content like this, you it'll open up all your doors. And that's one of the biggest reasons Photography Workshop Series, uh, you know, our photographers have a 95% re-enrollment rate. It's because they keep coming back because they're like, oh my gosh. You have access to the best models in the world. Oh my gosh, you have access to the best locations. The the cost of producing something like this is a hundred thousand dollars a day. Uh, I think I'm just going to come and take a workshop for a tiny fraction of that and shoot the greatest images of my life and let you guys take care of all that. Right. So that's a big advantage. But if you do want to do it on your own, um, I do recommend coming to one of these experiences first to build this body of work. Once you do that, you can now use this content to go to those modeling agencies and get those modeling agencies to give you their best models. But otherwise they're not going to, right? And you know, maybe if you lure them in with ridiculously high model fees and pay them, you know, $10,000 a day, but if you don't have that budget, then I recommend um, you know, you got to build the book first. You got to build it. It's got to be world class and it can't just be good photography. It has to be iconic photography with world class models, world class stylists, you know, the best of the best of the best and that is going to open up all of the doors. It's going to it's going to transform everything for you. It's building your photographic currency. So if it's a fashion model, I'm looking more for bone structure like this. Um, if it's uh, in height, I want it typically 5'9", 5'10", 5'11", somewhere in there for female models, um, typically size zero to two for fashion. Um, and uh, also um, uh, the models most, uh, my ideal is more of that European strong bone structure look, or if they're another um, ethnicity for, for casting for African-Americans, which I do a lot of, um, or Asian or um, Latina, uh, which I also have done a lot of in the past, um, I'm looking, just making sure that they have the right bone structure um, in their face and also that they are, um, they're, they're going to fit in the clothes really, really well that we're going to use. So um, I think that's really important. So when we're, we're casting models, I'm looking for, um, you know, mostly how the light is going to be bouncing off their face. Really, that's, that's the key. And a model like this, <laughs> no matter what angle you're shooting at, she looks amazing. Uh, Valena, she's a model from Vogue and she's, she's, she's world-class. She's amazing. So, um, when you're shooting with models like this, it really does take you to that next level, you know, or this girl who had been in the Versace campaign. So, um, but it really makes a difference. And this was shot at our, at our workshop by David Gesprek, actually, who's attending on this webinar right now. But if it's fashion, I'm looking for more of those traits. If it's lifestyle, it's totally different. 
totally different for lifestyle. Um, so um, I think that if it's a lifestyle uh, shoot, um, the kind of content that uh, that we're looking for, we're looking for happy, healthy people having fun and enjoying life and having this amazing experience. So um, I'm going to be looking for models that can interact, models that can move, models that smile, models that are funny, models that have a personality. And the only way to know that is oftentimes their model portfolios don't really showcase that very well because generally model portfolios tend to show more of the fashion stuff. So I like to research them. I like to look up their Instagram, their YouTube. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking up their different social platforms and I'm trying to, you know, even their TikTok. And I want to find out what's their personality like. And with these models, you know, I found out that these models had great fun and funny personalities. And that's why I cast them. That's why I booked them. And a model like Hannah, she's literally what I call a push button model. <laughs> you literally just push a button and Hannah will be bouncing up and down and smiling um, for eight to 10 hours straight. And she just does everything for you. You know, it's just, it's so easy. Um, and that of course makes posing a lot easier or on the flip side, uh, you know, if you're shooting fashion, um, you know, shooting with um, models that are amazing at posing uh, like this incredible model, um, it, Adelina or, um, or shooting with this top model, Elena all, you know, literally they'll just pose for you and you, you're just capturing what they're doing, which is pretty amazing, unusual, but it's, uh, it's something where I'm looking for, uh, you know, oftentimes I have to direct it, but I do love it when a model knows how to move, knows how to pose. And if it's a lifestyle model has a great smile and great energy. So that's what I'm looking for. I often will cast from 10 to 15 modeling agencies. Um, so I'll reach out. I have kind of a forum message that I contact all the modeling agencies with. Um, and then I'm approaching them with basically what I'm looking for, what the rate is, um, how many days, um, and, um, and, uh, and then also what the inspiration is, um, inspirational Pinterest board, um, and what the theme is, and then what is the usage? Is it going to be for editorial? Is it going to be for commercial advertising? Is it going to be for um, television? What's the usage and or social media, whatever? And I send that to them. And then they come back to me with what we call a package, a package of models. And then I go through and select from the packages that the modeling agency sent. And based upon that, um, I make my selections. I make, you know, say they send me, you know, 30 models at each agency, um, then I'll, out of those 30 models, I will make my selections of, hey, I really love these three girls. Um, what's their availability? And then we confirm them from there. And generally when we're doing that, you have good luck. Like if, you know, I, when I book models with modeling agencies, I would say, you know, they show up on time and uh, they will always be there and give their all, I would say at least 95 to 97% of the time. So I've had very good success with casting models from top modeling agencies. Um, top modeling agencies include Elite, Wilhelmina, Vision, Ford, IMG, um, Aston, um, Select Models. Those would all be, you know, some of the the model, you know, uh, the great modeling agencies or New York Models, LA Models. Um, those are all great agencies. So um, I'm going to be casting from a huge swath of them to then narrow it down to the best of the best of the best models that I want to use for the shoot. Um, and then I'm going to be selecting them, of course, also based on the story. You know, uh, are they going to be better for swim? Are they going to be better for lifestyle? Are they going to be better for fashion? Um, and each, you know, shoot that I'm doing is very different. So I have to cast them accordingly. And then I have to dress them accordingly. So my wardrobe stylist, of course, does that. But I'm also directing my wardrobe stylist as far as how I want them to dress them, what looks are going to look best on camera for each model. Okay. Um, all right. So the next would be, uh, you know, we talked about casting. Um, and coordinating the models. The next is coordinating details. We, we went in depth about that earlier, all the little details of, you know, making sure that the models arrive from, if I'm booking flights for them, they got the hotel room ready for them. Um, we've got um, uh, the catering ready. We've got all the details prepared so that the shoot flows smoothly. This is really important because you can't have all this put money and investment put into this and then everything just kind of collapses. Everything has to be flawless. Very, very important. Everything needs to be coordinated really, really in depth and detailed. Um, so, uh, and then and then as far as working with models and art directing them, that's where kind of the real magic happens, to be honest. That's where a lot of photographers struggle and a lot of photographers run into shooting scenes that just kind of look boring. And I want scenes that are energizing. I want scenes that are unbelievable. I want scenes that are iconic and spectacular and that are going to completely wow and dazzle 
um, the audience. And I want to create what we call photographic mastery. You know, that's really what this is about is photographic mastery at a really high level. Um, so art directing those scenes, art directing the models so that they're giving you the best looks. They're giving you the best expressions. They're giving you the right energy. They have these moments that you're capturing. And what I like to do is I like to create a moment. I like to art direct a moment. I like to explain it to the models. And then I want that moment to essentially unfold and then capture it, capture that spectacular moment um, exactly how I intended it. And then maybe I take it a step further. I take it a step further as far as, you know, oh my gosh, like I had this vision and I have a posing guide even. I often get like a Pinterest board of a posing guide and I bring it on set. Sometimes I even bring it like in Miami when I was shooting this. Um, this was at our Miami Beach workshop. Uh, you know, we not only are um, we have a, I, I'm not only coming up with ideas, but I'm also have a, a like a printed out posing guide, and I'm literally looking at the posing guide as we're shooting, and I'm showing that to the model, whether it's on your phone or an iPad or it's on a printed out piece of paper. But I'm showing that to the model so that they are like, oh my gosh, all right, that's the pose you want. Okay, I'm gonna get into it. And I do recommend um, that uh, you know that you as a photographer are. Uh, going to be, um, you know, the most, uh, you're going to be very directorial. I think that that's really important. And I think that a lot of photographers struggle being directorial, meaning they want to sit back and just capture stuff. And I want to make sure that you're not just doing that, but that you're participating, you know, that you are involved um, in the scene and you are creating these scenes and you're directing those models because those models, they, they want to be directed. They want to be directed. They want you to um, essentially tell them how you want them to be. Otherwise, they're going to struggle. They're not going to know. And I want to make sure you guys are um, commanding that set and being authoritative. And that's something that, of course, we can learn at the Photography Workshop Series in person because that's something I can teach you to do. It's very, very important. But it's art directing those scenes and making sure that, you know, you, you want to be res very respectful and you want to be very likable and you want to be very fun and relaxed and them to trust you. But you also need to tell them what to do yeah, so that cool. they... Uh, that they do it. They do it for you. And they actually want that. Models want to be directed. They want you to coach them because otherwise they're just standing there and they don't know what it looks like. And then they feel insecure. So I want to make sure they feel good and they feel like, you know, you know what you're doing. So, you know, and even if you don't, at least act like you do and make sure that you're directing those models in a scene that, um, that makes sense. And then maybe not spending too much time doing the same sequence have them move through it and keep adjusting and keep coming up with new ideas and stuff like that is also helpful so they don't get flat while while shooting on set um i like them to feel good about themselves i also generally don't like to show them the back of my camera unless the image is like iconic if the image is so ridiculous that it's going to get them more excited about the shoot then i'll show it to them otherwise i just keep shooting and i keep giving them praise and excitement and making them feel good about themselves so that they want to keep going um, and I do think that's important. Um, that way, uh, it doesn't slow down the production. I don't like it when, you know, photographers are showing every other scene. They're showing um, the models uh, what they're shooting because it slows down the whole production. And it's like, who cares? You know, you're, you're not shooting it for them. You're shooting it for the client and for you, right? So the models are there to help you execute that. All right. Um, but casting models is absolutely key. And this is one of the coolest things about the photography workshop series is that I have access to the best models in the world. I cast from the top agencies. We bring in the best of the best of the best. Um, you know, whether it's in Miami and we're shooting with models from Sports Illustrated, Victoria's Secret, models from the Guest Campaign, uh, major influencers, even celebrity models. Um, and, you know, to me, I want to have you guys have access to the best of the best of the best. So I provide that experience in person at the workshop series. So, you know, all these epic experiences are going to completely transform what you're doing in your photographic career and help you achieve greatness. Um, but anyway, so uh, casting is important and it all starts with that photographic portfolio, which we went over with Shannon, creating that unbelievable content that wows and dazzles the competition um, because the content is so strong now that Shannon can completely knock the socks off of anybody that, you know, comes to her uh, and that she shows it to, because now there's just like, oh my gosh, like, all right, like you're the real deal. I'm really excited. I want to work with you, Shannon. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. We want her, we want the clients to feel that way. And then I would say the last of it is selecting the best pictures, um, which of course, 
this is funny enough, kind of hard for a lot of people to, to do, um, but it's selecting the best of the best pictures. Um, and, you know, and after the workshops, for instance, you know, after the thousands of pictures that you photograph, we recommend that you narrow that down to the top 40 images each day. And then um, one of our photographic consultants um, will help guide you and select the best of the best images from there, because you only need one image per scene for a final publication. And um, so, and a lot of times photographers choose way too many. So um, we only need one image per scene. Um, so we're going to go through those images and we're going to try to select the ones that we feel are like, okay, you know, these are all awesome images. These are your best ones. And then from there, uh, what are the best of the best? Um, and there's all the little nuances. Um, and of course, part of it is also, you know, what do you think is best? You know, is it the right expression? Is it the right moment? Is it right for the clients you're going for? So, you know, here are Shannon's images from her um, larger selection. And, you know, you go through and you're looking through the images to find out, you know, which one is the best moment, right? And I think we we did a pretty good job selecting our favorites, you know, the number one scene for, or one number one shot from each scene. Um, but there's a lot of great ones to choose from, but it's, you know, making sure all the models are working together in the right moment, not like one model having a bad expression and the other models having a great expression. We want to sure all make sure all of them are. And then also all the animals, you know, if you have animals in the scene, making sure that the animals are in the right moment, um, making sure that all the details come together. And, um, and then, you know, we, we find the best one and then we find the scene that totally rocks it and is going to be the best shot for, um, you know, for the sequence. Um, but that's really, really important is the selection of images and selecting them more so on what the end goal publication or client is looking for and what's going to be the best for it rather than just like, oh yeah, I like that one or I don't like that one. I, I like to kind of put a third party hat on and I like to see it from maybe what a photo editor would see from a magazine, how a photo editor would interpret it and not just my own bias. So I have a, I'm have pretty good at doing that myself, but a lot of it, I struggle with that, with putting that third party you know hat on. And it's even worse if like, say you have a portfolio that you're curating and some of your images are of um, people that you know or care about and you have a personal connection to them, but maybe those images don't belong in your portfolio, but you've got to be hard and you've got to be completely objective and say, oh, but you know what? Is that person a supermodel or are they not? Do they deserve to be in that portfolio or maybe they don't? Okay, well, if they don't deserve to be in that portfolio, then gut it. And even if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, um, I, I also don't recommend using normal people. In your portfolio. I recommend booking models and doing shoots with models to show the best of the best of the best version of what it could be uh, for that, um, you know, for a wedding or for a portrait. So that's my recommendation. So even if you are a portrait or wedding photographer, make sure to show world-class top talent that is um, wearing wedding dresses or wearing, yeah, you know, or, or dresses portrait scene. So like, for instance, this is a, a model in a wedding dress that I'm showcasing at my castle. And this is something that I would do if I were you, if you are a wedding or portrait photographer is showcasing something like this because you're now competing with all the, you know, the, the brides every day are looking at, you know, bridal covers of bridal magazines. And you know what? That's what you're competing with. So unless your content looks like it's a celebrity or a top model, it's probably going to, you're not going to be able to compete at that high level and book a 10 or $20,000 um, wedding photography gig for a wedding. Um, so, you know, and it's the same thing that goes for portraits. So I do recommend bringing in top talent, even for portraits and weddings, um, no matter who you are, uh, no matter what you're doing. And this is one recommendation with the photography workshop series is great because we give you that opportunity um, to create, you know, amazing content with top talent, whether you are a uh, portrait photographer, commercial photographer, um, you know, what, whatever you do, that's, um, you know, that's really, really important. So, um, all right, guys, uh, I, I, we had an amazing panelist on today, um, the great Shannon Bright. We've had a lot of incredible photographers join us today, and I'm really, really, really excited about what we have going forward and um, with the French Castle, with the Elite Masterclass, with uh, our New York High Fashion Productions. And if you guys want to get involved in any of these, um, they most of them are almost sold out. Um, and this is the last chance to get involved in the French Castle, for instance. And it's the very, very last shot, um, the very, very last spot in the New York workshop. Otherwise, that one's sold out. So um, if you guys are interested, I'd love to have you there, see you there and work with you personally to create the greatest images you've ever shot in your lifetime and to create content that 